This is Recap Utopia, the show that brings you a summary of the major events of the past week in Utopia. Like previous episodes, this week's episode has picked out the most important news items for this week. From the decision of the Prosperity Party to ban Lama Magarsa from the Executive Committee of the Oromo Region Branch of the party, to the Andres in Walaita, and the sudden flood caused by heavy downpour and overflow of the Awash River, this week's episode addresses a number of issues. We also have news related to the recognition of an Ethiopian academician by the White House. I'm Wangil Tammene, and this is Recap Ethiopia. This week kicked off with a significant development in the leadership of Ethiopia's ruling party. The Prosperity Party announced on Sunday, August 9, 2020, that it has passed a decision to ban senior members of the Oromo Prosperity Party and Minister of Defense, Lama Megarsa, from the executive committee of the Oromia region branch of the party. Lama Megarsa, who was one of the highest ranking members of the party from the Oromia region, was banned from the party alongside Eiba Hassan and Milke Sami Dega. In a meeting held between the leadership of the party regarding current affairs in the country and other important issues, Prosperity Party broke the news through its Facebook account on Sunday evening. Lama Megarsa, who is the current Minister of Defense, was instrumental in the introduction of the current administration following the unrest that led to the resignation of the former Prime Minister of the country, Haile Mariam Dassale. Lama, who was a key member of the OPDO for most of his career, strongly opposed the formation of the Prosperity Party, claiming that the Oromo question has not been addressed yet. Reports at the time suggested that Lemma had refused to join the party initially before deciding to join the party at a later stage. Once described as the country's most popular politician by The Economist, Lemma Megarsa's dismissal comes as another major twist in the internal political context of the Prosperity Party, as well as in the overall politics of the country. As such, it warrants an insight into the career of the 50-year-old politician who has managed to affect the Ethiopian politics generally and the Oromia region specifically. Born in Gudaya Billa Wereda of the Oromia region on July 26, 1970, Lama Megarsa comes from the East Wenlaga region of Ethiopia. He received his first degree in political science and international relations from Addis Ababa University and later completed his master's in international relations from the same university. The current Minister of Defense also served in several postings under different prime ministers. Having spent most of his formative years in Ethiopian Regional Security Service, Lemma has been hailed by many as having unique insight into the context of Ethiopian politics as well as the Oromo struggle within it. For instance, in an article by Opride, an online media outlet focusing on news surrounding issues related to Oromia, Ethiopia, and the East African region, described the above traits possessed by Lemma as follows. Insiders say his acute understanding of the country's politics and inner working of its security apparatus is what prepared him for the current role. Lama Megarsa was the president of the Oromia regional state at that time. Before the three consecutive years of protests from the Kero movement fueled reforms in the ruling party of the nation, as well as most of its governing bodies, Lama Megarsa served in different capacities in the country. Among these positions, we can list his presidency of the Oromia Regional State between October 2016 and April 2019, as well as his different postings as the Commissioner of the Oromia Police, the President of the Chatri, the Head of the Oromia Administration and Security Bureau, as well as the Head of Trade and Market Development Bureau. Lemma's rise to the highest level of Ethiopian politics is described as meteoric. A not so well known politician within the Oromo community in the beginning of 2017, Lemma had become a household name by the end of the year. During his tenure as the president of the Oromia region, Lama was commended for his charismatic personality and for changing much of the working structure of the region. Most especially, his work to set a precedent in the deployment of military and special security forces is identified as a good example of his leadership skill. Lama's role in the 2018 government reform that introduced Prime Minister Abiy Yahmed's administration was also unmatched. Team Lemma, the movement's elite political leaders, coalition from Amhara and Oromia regions, including Prime Minister Abi, Deputy Prime Minister Demme Kamakonen, Foreign Minister Gadran Darkacho, and Minister of Peace Mufariat Kamil, among others, was instrumental in both strengthening the Oromo Democratic Party and the Amhara Democratic Party, as well as toppling the dominance of the Tigray People's Liberation Front in the coalition leading the country at the same time. Lemma was amongst the key officials within the APRDF senior leadership that fueled the political reform within the APRDF. 
His role in the election process for the Tyler Mariam the Silent successor as the head of the EPRDF in 2018 and his decision to step down from the presidency of the OPDO to pave the way for Abiy Ahmed to become the latest leader and prime minister could be listed as examples of Lemma's contribution to the current political topography of Ethiopia. For Pride's Oromo Person of the Year in 2017, runner-up Lemma Madarsa's role in the reform is described as follows by the organization. Like him or loathe him, when Lemma speaks, everyone in Ethiopia and its vast diaspora listens. If Opiduro becomes the People's Party in 2018 and beyond, it owes much to Lemma's powerful oratory, charismatic leadership, and a genuine concern about the Oromo condition. Following the introduction of the new administration under Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali, Lemma was appointed as the Minister of Defense, a predominantly TPLF controlled position in the past, in April 2018. His appointment, however, was followed by him slowly fading away from his central role in the country's politics, as well as the Prosperity Party's internal leadership. Even though there were signs of problems in the working relationship between himself and other highest ranking leaders in the party, the creation of the new Prosperity Party in place of the infamous EPRDF is believed to be the last straw in the relationship between Lemma and the Prosperity Party. It is in this context that the recent decision to ban the Minister of Defense came during the meeting of the Oromo Prosperity Party last weekend. The dismissal of Lemma Madarsa from the Executive Council of the Oromo Bloc of the Prosperity Party comes at a crucial time in the country's contemporary internal politics. With the Oromo struggle showing signs of returning since July, the dismissal of the highly popular figure within the Oromo community is quite the decision by the ruling party of the country. This week also featured similar meetings in the other regional representation offices of the Prosperity Party. Like many ethnic groups, the Olaita, currently part of the Southern Nation Nationalities and People's Regional States, won their own state, which would give them greater regional autonomy. Due to several political and historical contexts in Ethiopia, Ethnic identity and autonomy have taken center stage in the country's political discourse, its highest governing body of law, and the day-to-day -day conversations of Ethiopians across the large East African nation. Like other ethnic groups in Ethiopia, the Walaita also have questions of statehood in an effort to guarantee cultural representation as well as regional autonomy within the federalism system of administration in the Ethiopian government. Currently forming part of the Southern Nation Nationalities and People's Regional State, the question of statehood among the Walaita ethnic group seeks to achieve what the Sidama ethnic groups achieved a few months ago. Ethiopia currently has 10 states representing more than 80 ethnic groups. The federal system of governance enshrined in the constitution of the country allows any and all ethnic groups right to self-governance to the extent of self-determination, allowing such ethnic groups where certain substantial and procedural requirements are met. An ethnic group may therefore request a referendum whenever the question of establishing one's own semi-autonomous region arises. The case of the Sidama region is a good example of the constitutional procedures for self-determination as well as the current ethnocentric political topography of Ethiopia. Created in July 2020, the Sidama regional state was formed following a referendum that secured 98.52 of the votes to the separate from the Southern Nations Nationalities and People's Regional State. It is now the 10th and most recent regional state with its capital in Hawassa. The Walaita are next in the queue for self-determination and forming an independent state, or so it seems. Okay, to understand the contextual facts of the Walaita case, it is necessary to go back to December 2018. It had just been a little over seven months when the Walaita Zone Council approved their request to self-determination and self-autonomy within the federal structure. This kicked off the process for self-determination clearly set forth in the 1994 constitution of the country. The constitution of the country requires the federal government to prepare a referendum in order to determine the public opinion of the people of Walaita. The time frame for this, according to the constitution, is one year. However, the federal government failed to hold such a referendum within the prescribed period of time. In protest, the 38 members of the Southern Region Council withdrew themselves from their membership in the council. According to a report by Adli Standard, these members were representatives of the Walaita region and decided to withdraw from the membership following the government's plan to divide the region into four independent regions. Because of strong belief that this will threaten the bid by the Walaita people to have an independent administration and therefore prompted tensions between the Walaita zone and the regional state as well as the federal government. This week saw another major development in the matter as altercations between citizens and security forces left 21 dead and an additional 105 persons injured. 
The altercation came about as a result of riots following the arrest of 26 political leaders and members of the Walaita community on Sunday by the federal police. The arrested officials include the Walaita Zone Administrator, Delgato Kunde, as well as members of the Council for Walaita Statehood Request, as well as members of the opposition party, Walaita National Movement. The head of SNNPR's Peace and Security Bureau, Alama Yagodi, confirmed arrests during a televised press conference describing the charges as having intentions to incite violence in collaboration with ousted political parties, or Lefshani and TPLF, to create unrest in the southern region. Unrests broke out in the Sodo, the capital of the Walaita Zone, over the following days. Police forces were criticized by the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission that asserted the amount of forces used in the process of mitigating and containing the arrest in the zone. Sodo in the greater Walaita region experienced what the capital of the nation went through following the assassination of Hachalu Hundesa on June 29, 2020. Deserted streets, closed roads, broken glasses and other familiar scenes were seen in the city during the days that followed the arrest of the zone officials as well as other community figures. The events of the past week in Sodo and other parts of Olaita is yet another depiction of the challenging internal political circumstances of the country. It has been a truly challenging summer for all Ethiopians with recurrent news of instability and violence in different parts of the country. The north is still burning. Cattle with the TPLF still adamant on holding the regional elections in the Tigray regional state of the country. The Omoromo region is still nursing its wounds from the violence that erupted following the assassination of Hajj al-Hundisa at the end of last June. Tensions over the future of the SNNPR and administration of the region's most vibrant city, Hawassa, are also additional causes of concerns in Ethiopia. Let's move on to the east of Ethiopia, where a sudden flood caused by heavy downpour and overflow of the Awash River has displaced at least 30,000 residents in the Afar regional state of Ethiopia. The region's Disaster Prevention and Food Security Coordinating Committee said that the flood was severe in certain areas of the region, such as Asaita, Afambo, Dukti, and Mile districts. No human casualties is reported yet, but the flood has washed away thousands of cattle, chiefly goats. As the heavy downpour and flood continued in the region, residents of the above districts were forced to flee to nearby towns, leaving their cattle behind. The federal government has airlifted the most vulnerable people using a helicopter. However, not a lot of survivors were airlifted as the carrying capacity of the helicopter was limited to 50. The region's Disaster Prevention and Food Security Bureau head Mohammed Hussein said that the bureau has so far relocated 400 people from Galileo and Karbuda districts to schools in Asaita town. Mohammed attributed the flood to the release of huge amounts of water from Goga, Tandaho, Besaka, and Kasam dams that are located in the upper streets. He said that at least 30,000 residents have been displaced due to the flood. Last week, the Ethiopian National Meteorological Agency has identified the above affected towns as flood-prone areas. According to experts, the area is prone to flood due to two major reasons. One is the overflow of the Awash River, which crosses several towns in its stream, and the second reason is attributed to the heavy rains that occurs in the region. Early warning and emergency response director Ida Yassin said that overflooding occurred in six districts of the regional states following the heavy rainfall this rainy season. Out of the 32,000 displaced persons, 70,450 lived in the five localities of Asaita district. The government has been providing relief for over 1,100 victims in two localities of the same district. Some 1,260 persons living in Koladura and Galilee localities find themselves surrounded by water since last week due to the flood. According to the director, some 63,000 people are vulnerable to the flood, while 44,000 are also at risk of displacement in the lower and middle Awash of Afar regional states. Finally, a cause for celebration for Ethiopians came in the form of recognition from the White House to Savannah State University's Dr. Mulatulema for his contribution to the field of science and mathematics, as well as his successful initiative to increase the representation of different minority groups in the same field of study. The White House awarded Dr. Mulatu with the Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics, Engineering, Mentoring, the highest award in the same field in the United States of America. The work of Dr. Mulatu in the Savannah State University for the past 25 years was recognized by the White House this past week. The award is the highest national award in the field of mentoring. 
first established in the 1995 and subsequently given out every year since then, the award is given to individuals that show exceptional efforts of mentoring in the field of science, mathematics, and engineering, especially in the context of contributing to the representation of minority groups in the fields enumerated above. Prior to joining Savannah State, Dr. Mulatu worked as a mathematician instructor for five years in Awash Junior University. According to the Savannah's Tribune, the doctor taught mathematics in Savannah State for over 25 years, at which time he contributed to the work being done to increase the representation of minority groups in the same discipline. The award received by the doctor will yield him a certificate signed by U.S. President Donald Trump, as well as a financial award worth 10,000 U.S. dollars. That's it for this week's episode. Tune in next week for more of Recapitoke.